Hey everybody, it's Tina. I haven't done one of these in a little bit. So, um, you know, uh, the life has been rough this year, okay? Let's just say, but at the same time, while there has been the, the challenges, there has also been beauty. And so I am jumping in and uh, just want to talk a little bit about what's happening right now. So um, I've lost a lot of people this year. Um, even though I might not have posted all of the losses in my social media, um, every, uh, it just seems like it's been a lot. Um, I was vocal, a little bit more vocal about losing my grandson. Um, and um, that brought me to today's topic of this video. I'm gonna start coming to you live in this Light Bright community um, each week, whether it be live or by video, but uh, you can join me and you can join me in the discussions. And today I wanna talk a little bit about grief. You see, um, I've had a lot of loss before 2020 in my life, um, as well as, um, uh, but I, but I've, but I've been able to channel grief into something beautiful, and um, I don't get stuck there. And uh, I just felt like today's topic was really good because there's a lot of universal principles wrapped up into this and the way that I approach grief. And so I felt it was a, a good space to talk about it. My daughter and I, um, who um, lost her son. Um, recently um, was we were talking and um, we were talking about grief and we were talking about um, I didn't want her to stuff down those tears you know you know how every time somebody comes around and you begin talking about it and then you begin to cry that you try to suck them back in well I want you to know that that holds that position, that pain right there. And the best thing that you can do is to go through the pain. Don't try to numb it. Don't try to pivot from it. Go through it. Now, I know when, um, with the loss of a loved one, that a lot of times, um, I've, I've been there. Um, I have a lot of, let me just say this, um, and I'm saying it with love. I have a lot of relatives with chemical dependency, a lot. And when my daughter and I was having this discussion, we were talking about how I've been able to escape um, addictions um, and, you know, especially any type of chemical dependency, any type of addiction in that manner. Um, and one of the reasons is because I learned how to process grief. Both of my parents have transitioned and are no longer on this physical plane. So um, I want to let you know that up front. So you know that I'm not just talking about this lightly. I'm talking about this from experience. And I also used to run a home health company, I used to own a home health company, and um, helped a lot of people process grief. And so um, I'm bringing this to you because the best way to keep myself on track with all of the loss that I'm experiencing right now is to um, really talk about it and, and to help other people. Because um, in one of, if you go and look at the 30 day prosperity challenge, um, I talk about um, loss. One of the things that keep people stuck in life is the loss, loss of people, loss of things, loss of status. Um, and instead of getting the beauty from that loss, they get stuck in it. And so they just continuously repeat it and live in that moment. And so I decided that I was going to do this video and I might talk about it um, for the next few weeks to come. Um, just again, number one, to stay on track and to help anybody else out there who was stuck because of a loss. So the first thing is, is do not stuff down your feelings. Um, I know that I am a strong black woman. Um, 
So a lot of times people give a negative connotation to that. Um, I am a strong back woman because every day I seek to connect with my source. It isn't because I hide tears. It isn't because I put on a brave face and it isn't because I stuff anything down. I take offense to when um, people talk about black women shouldn't be strong anymore because to me that's like, oh, so you would rather for me to be weak. Now, there are a lot of people who, you know, break it down to masculine and feminine and, and all of those kind of things. And I have never bought into that. Um, I am all of those and so are you. So when you think of masculine and feminine, even though some people want to break it into a different law, it really is the law of polarity. If there's something that's hard, there's something that's soft. And the only way that either side is deemed good or bad is because you gave that value to it or somebody else gave that value to it and, 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 and then you took it on. You accepted it as one of your beliefs. But I don't want to go too far down that, that, that rabbit hole. But what, the, the main point is, is I don't want you to stuff down when feel that pain. The only way to is through. Now I know in the beginning after a loss of a loved one that a lot of times um, people will prescribe, even hospitals will prescribe things so that you can sleep, things so that, um, um, so you can get by. Um, I'm not judging you if you need that because my God, I can tell you I needed that on um, some occasions. But what I can tell you that I know now is that that prevented the grieving processing from starting um, because you always went back to that moment. One of the things I learned from my mother being an alcoholic is she relived a lot of moments that she never processed so that she could go past them. And so um, I want you to breathe. Now that might sound trite, but a lot of people do not breathe deeply. When you're feeling that pain, deepen your breath. Do not contract. When you contract, you're holding it. I want to give you a prime example. Have you ever had a paper cut and you went, well, you solidified that feeling in your body. And so in that day, more of it came, more ways for you to feel that type of pain showed up. Maybe now you've walked and you stubbed your toe. Maybe somebody called you and gave you some news that gave you that sensation because now that addiction to that sensation is starting, okay? And so I want you to breathe. When you're grieving, breathe. And so the best thing you can do instead of retracting is expand because there is the other side of this pain. Doesn't mean it's going to go completely away today, but we're going to level it up and we're going to let it come in and we're going to let it go through. So um, I will do some videos on some breathing techniques. Um, I probably will post somebody else's video because there are some very, very good videos about breathing. But um, even now, as I was just talking, it was like I was going out of breath at the end of my at the end of my words. And so, get that breath all the way down into your diaphragm, and you know they call it the breath of fire, or uh, uh, you know there's the the East terms for it. like keep that breath. Like it looks like you're hyperventilating, but you're keeping breath going in. So that pain, it, it needs somewhere to go. Do not let it get stuck. Keep breathing. Same with the tears. When the tears need to flow, let them flow. God is cleansing you. Let, let, let them come. Let them come. Let them flow. Let them release. Um, uh, like... That, that's probably the, that's the main thing that I wanted to say in this video is just about the release. Oh, there is the second thing. The second thing is, is that um, you must become your priority. While other people could be grieving with you and keep grieving around you, this isn't the time to need to take care of other people's feelings. Um, I made it real clear to my daughter that 
If you don't want to answer the phone, don't answer. If you don't want to answer a text or whatever, don't answer. If Even if it's me, I don't care who it is, don't answer. This is the time, like, this is a major event in your life and you need to be able to process it. And uh, until you have control over it, while, and I know people mean well, but a lot of times what's going on is people are trying to transmute, even without knowing, their pain to you. So all you're doing is reinfecting the wound. But if you decide to get your footing first, doesn't mean that the loss is any less. It doesn't mean that anything else, but you are choosing to process so that you can get your footing. While I know it's not something you want, we must get to the point where we can really fully live. In that, um, in that video that I talked about in the, um, the 30 Day Prosperity Challenge, I talk about your dead relatives don't want you stuck. They don't want you in a permanent state of grief where you're constantly mourning their loss. And on the other side of it, you can hear their direct downloads when you get back to bliss, when you get back to knowing. And that isn't, doesn't mean you gotta get there today, but what it does mean is that there's something on the other side that's waiting for you, on the other side of this pain. So take care of yourself. Um, a lot of people talk about self-care, but they break it down to rituals and things. Taking a bath, getting a massage, getting your nails done, your hair done, all of those things. I believe self-care is more about alignment. Self-care is about getting back to your source no matter what. No matter what's happening, finding the bliss and the joy of your source is really what self-care is and you deserve it. So do not feel like you need to take care of anyone else's feelings. And I know that's hard because that's what we've been taught to do. But in this moment, it's best that you take care of you. Breathing, getting to the point of accepting the loss. Even if you can't accept the loss, breathe first. Feel the pain. Know that the pain is temporary. It is avoiding the pain that makes it permanent. That's what causes suffering, the avoidance of pain. So breathe. It hurts. It hurts. Um, and I can tell you, it was a little different this time with my grandson. I was um, here when my daughter called me to let me know what was happening. And I couldn't be there, I was, um, about, was about two hours away. In that moment, I couldn't be there. So all I could do was sit and let her express her pain and then told her that we will get through this. Um, and don't, don't, don't worry. And so I began to do the things I needed to do to take care of her. But after I hung up the phone, I began to take care of myself. Now, listen, I had all of my grandkids with me. Um, and um, Mace, the, the one almost two year old, he just kept looking at me and he knew that something was wrong and he was trying to console me. And no, what I would do previously, maybe eight, nine years ago, was I would try to mask that. I didn't. I let the tears flow. Um, even though I couldn't articulate the words yet and didn't want to, because I needed to give it perspective to these children, you know, was not going to inflict my adult pain on them yet. I just cried and I let the tears flow. And then when they stopped and, you know, I went and tried to do something and I came back and they started again, I let the tears flow. And then I remembered to breathe. Um, it will begin to change your life. Um, 
in the next video, we will break this up into two weeks. So next Sunday, I'll do another one. And I'll do another one about beginning to process your emotions. Um, but I want to let this one sit because I'm sure, um, as sure as you're sitting here watching this video, that there's some loss that you've been avoiding and it's time to bring it up and face the pain of it so it can stop repeating in your life. You know how when you were in a bad relationship um, and you left that one and you got in another relationship, you noticed that it was really the same person just with a different name and a different face and you kept attracting the same shit. Like it's time to stop attracting the shit and it's time to allow God, your ancestors, the universe, source, whatever you want to call it, to give you the blessings from that loss because there is no loss in the spirit. You know, as a matter of fact, that's what I want to close with. So let me grab um, one of the affirmations that I say a lot. Let me grab that because I think that's a beautiful thing to close with. Um, I think that's a beautiful thing to close with. Okay. I'm just hold on a second, guys. I didn't plan on doing this, but I think this is a perfect quick way to end. Um, you guys already know one of my favorite books of all time is The Game of Life and How to Play It by Florence Scovel Shin. Um, she also has another book called Your Word is Your Wand. And if you are a part of GLOW, um, it's one of, um, there's videos where I'm actually reading this and doing the affirmations and you can do them with me. So um, if you're a part of GLOW, you can jump over and get this. But I, I feel that this, is such a way to um, end this. So if man loses anything, this is, the, this is from um, Your Word is Your Wand, and this is uh, the chapter on loss and the affirmations on loss. So it says, if man loses anything, it shows there is a belief, belief of loss in his subconscious mind. As he erases this false belief, the article or its equivalent will appear on the external. Do you hear me? Now listen, I'm talking about my daughter's baby right now. Like I can't believe this stuff here, but don't believe it there. See, sometimes we wanna believe it if we're talking about some lip gloss, but we don't wanna believe it in the stuff that's hard. Like I'm gonna do the work every single time and I believe it in this. I believe with all my heart that there is a beautiful blessing for my daughter and my family in this. I do. And the only way that that beautiful blessing is going to show up is once she's moved herself through the grief and the belief of loss. So I'm going to read this again and I'm going to stop. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to stop with my commentary for now. Um, so I'm going to get through it. If man loses anything, it shows there is a belief of loss in his subconscious mind. As he erases this false belief, the article or its equivalent where will appear, sorry, will appear on the external. For example, a woman lost a silver pencil in a theater. She made every effort to find it, but it was not returned. She denied loss taking the affirmation. I deny loss, there is no loss in divine mind. Therefore, I cannot lose that pencil. I will receive it or its equivalent. Several weeks elapsed. One day she was with a friend who wore about her neck a cord, a beautiful gold pencil, who turned to her and said, do you want this pencil? I paid $50 for it at Tiffany's. The woman was aghast and replied, almost forgetting to thank her friend, oh God, aren't you wonderful? 
the silver, the silver pencil wasn't good enough for me. Let's say that again. Because she knew that God is her source and her supply. She denied the loss. And then when the replacement, because when you deny loss and you know that there's no loss in divine mind, you know that it's coming back or its equivalent will come to you. She got a gold pencil worth $50 from Tiffany and then exclaimed, because when you recognize and are grateful for it, it shows, it's like saying more please thank you to your source. She said, oh God, aren't you wonderful? The silver pencil wasn't good enough for me. Man can only lose what doesn't belong to him by divine right or isn't good enough for him. And so let's take these affirmations really quickly. There's no loss in divine mind, therefore I cannot lose anything that is rightfully mine. Infinite intelligence is never too late. Infinite intelligence knows the way of recovery. There is no loss in divine mind, therefore I cannot lose anything which belongs to me. It will be restored or I will receive its equivalent. So I just wanted to bring that to you today. Um, a lot for me too, uh, just so that I can stay on track because just because I know these things doesn't mean I don't have to practice them. So um, I don't know if you know, but the Light Bright community is a free community, this part. If you know anybody that needs this, invite them here so that they can come see it um, and practice with you. If they want to learn more about the practices, then they can join GLOW, which is $47 a month. But there's a dollar trial somewhere because um, it is about the practice. It's about being able to learn the techniques and to learn what's true. And we've created these in God's universal principles and metaphysics and quantum physics you know i saw somebody i know i'm about to go on another tangent but i saw someone who shared a picture of albert einstein um when he taught at lincoln university which is a historically black college and um one of my favorite um movies or miniseries is genius where they highlighted the life of Albert Einstein. And you know, they showed the good and the not so good as some people would wanna call it. But one of the things that he wanted to make sure he saw black oppression. So he went directly to a black university to help. And um, because metaphysics is, and, um, and quantum physics is really a big key in um, releasing black oppression. So again, if you know somebody who um, is, is suffering with any losses, I mean, in 2020, um, it's just been one of those times. Um, I don't wanna minimize their loss, but I do wanna help them get through it. Um, I don't wanna minimize their loss, but I do want them to know that there is some beauty waiting on the other side, that there is the equivalent that is waiting to come to them. So if you know someone who needs that, um, share this community with them so they can join. Um, I decided that I didn't want my communities living on Facebook. Um, I still have some small communities there, but um, I don't want any social media being able to control any of the the things that we do and I don't want to be censored because if we're sharing information that they don't agree with they hide it that's not fair um because there are different truths for different people um one of the things that a lot of people like to say a truth is a truth and a lie is a lie but I, I want to tell you something um truth is relative to your vibration <laughs> I want to say that again truth is relative to your vibration. Um, as a matter of fact, tweet that, quote me on that one, because um, that's a good one.
you can have five people in a room and they can all see the same thing, but based on where their vibration lies, their signature vibration is how that story will be reported. Some people will see that something was done to them even when it wasn't. Some people will see that it was a thing that is causing some kind of beauty into the world. Some people will see it as, um, won't even see some of the things in the room because they're flying too high to see it. So there can be things, there can be chaos happening around you and you can miss it if you understand and how to fly higher than it. So um, I just wanna help in any way that I can. So I hope this video is helping you as much as it's helping me. I'll see you soon, see you next week, bye.